it's a pleasure to be there and it's a pleasure to comment on the question which is so important, what can the G20 uh, and central banks uh, do to deal with the uh, monetary and financial challenges that are associated with the uh, present virus crisis uh, whilst preparing the way for uh, a better future. Uh, I will try to elaborate on this question in four points. The first will be the G20 itself and uh, try to respond to the question why the G20 was so absent. A second question would be to reflect on the present monetary policy, which is pursued by the various central banks. Third uh, point would be to reflect on the post-virus crisis and how the central bank could deal with the uh, situation where we have a level of over-indebtedness, which would be uh, significantly higher than pre-virus episode. And a last point would be to reflect, assuming that the virus was uh, uh, eliminated, assuming that the post-virus episode is uh, also uh, eliminated the overall over indebtedness that had been accumulated, what to do with the, what would be the new normal, if I may, what would be the new sustainable monetary policy that we could expect from central banks. So, let me take my first point. Uh, I said myself uh, on the G20 that it was appalling to see that the G20 was absent at a moment where we had obviously the worst global crisis uh, since World War II, uh, uh, a crisis which was global by nature because a pandemic is global by nature. The comparison with the reaction in the episode of the great financial crisis was really, really appalling. Uh, at the time, we had a reaction of the G20. We had uh, the Pittsburgh meeting. We had the uh, London meeting. And we had a mobilization of all systemic countries in the world, advanced and emerging, uh, to try to deal with a crisis which was really global. Uh, in that case, we had uh, no uh, activation of the G20. And, uh, of course, uh, there is an explanation, which is a very bad one, obviously. The uh, culture at the global level, at, uh, at uh, the level of many nations, has changed. We have the presence of what I would call a national populism in the US, in India, in Brazil, in Russia, in Turkey, not to speak of, of China, which is very nationalistic uh, itself. Uh, to create a sentiment that uh, finally uh, the multilateralism and the international community had not necessarily to address the issues at stake. And that is very grave. Uh, I hope very much that it appears so clearly that it is absurd that the call of many for the G20 to be much more active and to, be, to give the appropriate political support for efforts that have to be done at the level of the entire international community and not only at the level of each nation. So we will see what happens. Uh, I, uh, I call in myself, of course, for a very, very active uh, mobilization of the G20. Let me turn to my second point, which is uh, what to say on the present uh, central banks. I would say that uh, uh, in the post-Great Financial Crisis episode, they were constantly saying that they were a little bit too much the only game in town and that they needed the uh, contribution of governments. In the present uh, crisis, it is so obvious that the crisis is devastating and since the very beginning, the sudden stop of large part of the economy, that governments have stepped in. So from that standpoint, the uh, central banks are not alone. Uh, I take it that what they are doing presently is uh, uh, correct, and that in concentrating on being extremely active to give liquidity, supply liquidity everywhere in their own uh, economies, and I'm speaking of all central banks uh, at the present moment, in being very, very active to be sure that the, their economy is financed correctly with the appropriate uh, loans, the appropriate financing through markets, uh, 
uh, is also extremely important, and being able to be extremely flexible in intervening in, in various markets, publics and private, and, and private, is something also which is uh, done, it seems to me, by all central banks in a way which uh, is appropriate. We will see whether all this is commensurate with what is necessary, but uh, I would say at the present moment, my judgment would be rather positive. All that being said, two remarks uh, are important. First of all, the central banks uh, must, of course, be very clear on the fact that they, they provide liquidity, they provide credit, they, provide, they are uh, supporting uh, all uh, markets, but they are not subsidizing themselves. It's not their job. It's the job of government and parliament. And I would also mention the fact that when we compare what is done on both sides of the Atlantic, we have to be uh, aware of the fact that the financing of the U.S. economy is made through markets by 70 to 75 percent, and in Europe the financing is made through banks by 70 percent uh, as a proportion. So uh, it's uh, very normal and absolutely necessary for both central banks to concentrate on the financing of their economy and have a special attention, of course, for the proportion of financing, which is the most important. Let me turn now to the third point, which is what will we do, what the central banks will do uh, in the post-crisis, post-virus episode. Then, of course, we will have much more uh, indebtedness uh, all over uh, the, the economies and the world. Uh, we will have public indebtedness, private indebtedness. Uh, I see that economists are... Uh, uh, frequently mentioning the fact that it could be erased or uh, attenuated through inflation, and uh, they are calling for a very high level of inflation, uh, which, in my opinion, could be absolutely devastating for uh, for uh, the most vulnerable part of the of our societies and population, uh, those who are protecting uh, the least uh, against this taxation, the inflation taxation. Uh, we have those who are saying that uh, default would be unavoidable and that not only unavoidable but desirable uh, in uh, those circumstances, which again seems to me to uh, not to take into account the fact that uh, it is a trauma which is uh, really dramatic and uh, uh, could again be extremely grave uh, if you take the standpoint of the most vulnerable part of the population. So I would call myself for progressively swallowing, if I may, the extra indebtedness, which would be considerable, through a combination of accommodating monetary policy with very low interest rates. And uh, central banks know today how to get very low interest rates, not only on a short-term basis, but also on a medium and long-term basis, and to have a level of inflation in line with the definition of price stability uh, whatever the definition of price stability is. Today, it's 2%. We know that it was extremely difficult for many central banks to get up to 2%. Uh, I don't pronounce myself on what would be the appropriate level of, uh, of, uh, in, of price stability, or definition of price stability. Uh, we will see. Uh, I hope that it would be decided upon on a global uh, consultation basis between central banks in order to be sure that we don't introduce their additional element of instability at a global level. Uh, of course, this uh, combination of relatively high inflation and very low uh, interest rates uh, would be compatible uh, with stability, and in particular financial stability, if there is a very clever and active use of uh, macro potentials, uh, and if uh, the central banks and all the other authorities are very keen on preserving uh, the uh, possibility of, uh, of systemic risk, financial systemic risk materializing. So it's a, it's a very complex combination of uh, efforts that have to be made by various authorities. Now let me turn to the last point, which is what we, we observe after uh, the virus is uh, defeated after we have uh, won against the overall indebtedness. Uh, I take it that the new normal will have all the legacy 
of the great financial crisis, namely different ways of communicating for central banks, the responsibility of banking surveillance, which was not the case uh, before the great financial crisis, the macro potential playing a very important role, prevention of systemic risk, and also I have to say that uh, the uh, idea that uh, there should be a joint definition or a convergent definition of price stability at the global level seems also to me to be something which is very important and is the legacy of the great financial crisis. Can we add uh, something to that? I, it seems to me that the, the non-conventional measures will be still there, of course, and uh, the idea that at any moment you could mobilize non-conventional uh, instruments uh, seems to me absolutely clear I would say the idea of that we, according to which we would go back to the normal before the great financial crisis seems to me absolutely inappropriate. But I expect that in the sustainable post-crisis uh, uh, normal, uh, there it would it would not be considered normal to finance monetarily permanently the uh, budget. I take it that this should be preserved and uh, even if an unintended consequence of part of the utilization of the non-conventional measures, in particular the uh, intervention to make the yield curve as appropriate as possible, the unintended consequence might be that you buy treasuries, but it should not be based upon a permanent uh, support uh, to the treasuries. So I hope very much that we will avoid that in the new sustainable normal, which would be very different from the ancient normal, a very new normal. All the best.